John William McCormick December 21, 1891, to November 22, 1980, was an American politician from Boston, Massachusetts, an attorney and a Democrat. McCormick served in the United States Army during World War I, and afterwards won terms in both the Massachusetts House of Representatives and Massachusetts State Senate before winning election to the United States House of Representatives. McCormick enjoyed a long House career 1928 to 1971, and advanced through the leadership ranks to become the 45th Speaker of the House. He served as Speaker from 1962 until his 1971 retirement. McCormick's congressional career was highlighted by his support for the New Deal measures undertaken to combat the Great Depression, U.S. involvement in World War II, and support for the Great Society programs of the 1960s, including civil rights, education, and health care for the elderly. A staunch anti-communist, McCormick supported U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. His support for the war and the seniority system in Congress caused increasing numbers of younger members to challenge his leadership. McCormick survived a 1969 contest with Mo Udall for the speakership. He did not run for re election to his House seat in 1970, and retired to his home in Boston. He later resided at a Dedham nursing home, where he died in 1980. At 42 years and 58 days, as of 2017 McCormick's service in the U.S. House ranks 15th in terms of uninterrupted time. He is the longest-serving member of the U.S. House in Massachusetts history. Joseph William Martin Jr. is second to McCormick at 41 years, 305 days. <laughs> Early life McCormick was born in Boston on December 21, 1891. He was the son of Joseph H. McCormick, a hod carrier and native of Prince Edward Island, Canada, and his wife Mary Ellen O'Brien McCormick of Boston 1861 to 1913. He said he was one of twelve children, several of whom died as children or young adults. In fact, Mary Ellen McCormick carried eight children to term, and six lived long enough to be counted in the census or included in other records. John McCormick's older siblings Patrick D. 1911, Catherine D. 1906, and James D. 1906 died at ages 24, 19 and 17, respectively. His brother Edward Nako died in Boston in 1963 at age 67. McCormick's brother Donald died in Texas in 1966 at the age of 65. McCormick also had a half-brother named Harry from his father's first marriage. Harry died on Prince Edward Island at age 18 in 1902. McCormick said for most of his life that his father died when McCormick was 13. Other sources indicate that his father actually left the family and moved to Waldoboro, Maine, where he worked in the local granite quarries. He died in 1929, and was buried in a pauper's grave at Waldoboro Rural Cemetery. McCormick attended the John Andrew Grammar School through the 8th grade. He then left school to help support his family, initially working for $3 a week as an errand boy for a brokerage firm. McCormick and his brothers also managed a large newspaper delivery route for $11 a week. He later left the brokerage for the office of attorney William T. Way, where he received a 50 cent a week increase. He began to study law with Way and passed the Massachusetts bar exam at age 21, despite not having gone to high school or college. Topic. Start of political career As a young man, McCormick began his involvement in politics by making campaign speeches on behalf of local Democratic candidates. In May 1917, McCormick was elected to serve as a member of the Massachusetts Constitutional Convention, representing the 11th Suffolk District of the Massachusetts House of Representatives. World War I In June 1918, McCormick enlisted in the United States Army for World War I, and was initially posted to Camp Devens, Massachusetts as a member of the 14th Company of the 151st Depot Brigade. After completing his initial training, McCormick was assigned to the Infantry Replacement Center at Camp Lee, Virginia to receive officer training. McCormick advanced through the ranks from private to sergeant major, and was attending officer training school at Camp Lee when the armistice occurred. He was discharged in late November, following the end of the war.
Topic: <laughs> Continued political career. After the war McCormick practiced law and resumed his political career. He soon entered the state legislature, representing the 11th Suffolk District in the House from 1920 to 1922 and serving in the Senate from 1923 to 1926, including holding the leadership position of Democratic floor leader in 1925 and 1926. In 1926 he made an unsuccessful primary election run against incumbent Congressman James A. Gallivan. McCormick made a favorable impression in a losing cause, leaving him well positioned for a future race. He resumed practicing law, and built a successful career as a trial attorney, which enabled him to enjoy an income that reached $30,000 a year approximately $400,000 in 2016. McCormick was selected as a delegate to every state Democratic convention from 1920 until his retirement. In addition, he was a delegate to the Democratic National Conventions of 1932, 1940, 1944, and 1948. <laughs> Congressional career McCormick's opportunity to run for Congress again came after Gallivan died in 1928. That November McCormick won both the special election to complete Gallivan's term in the U.S. House as well as the general election for a full term. He was re-elected 20 times, initially from the 12th District, and from the renumbered 9th after 1963. McCormick usually won re-election without difficulty, and he served in the House from November 6, 1928 to January 3, 1971 the 70th to 91st Congresses. He did not run for re-election in 1970. Early years in Congress At the beginning of his House career, McCormick served on the Committee on Territories. In his second term, Speaker John Nance Garner appointed McCormick to the Powerful Ways and Means Committee, and he served there until 1941. McCormick maintained a consistently liberal voting record throughout his congressional career, including support for the New Deal. In 1934, he served as chairman of the Special Committee on Un American Activities, known as the McCormick Dickstein Committee, which investigated communist and Nazi propaganda and recruitment efforts in the United States. State prior to World War II. Topic: <inaudible> Ascension to House leadership. When Sam Rayburn became Speaker in 1940, he backed McCormick for Majority Leader, a key factor in McCormick's victory over Clifton A. Woodrum. For the next 21 years, McCormick was the second-ranking Democrat in the House. He served as majority leader with Rayburn as speaker when Democrats had the majority, 1939 to 1947, 1951 to 1953, 1955 to 1961, and as minority whip with Rayburn as minority leader when the Republicans controlled the House, 1947 to 1949, 1953 to 1955, always staunch in his opposition to both communism and Nazism, he played a key role in extending the military draft just before the attack on Pearl Harbor, at a time when isolationist sentiment and opposition to U.S. involvement in the war were still strong. He was chairman of the Select Committee on Astronautics and Space Exploration in the 85th Congress 1957 to 1959. In this role, he introduced and secured passage of the bill which created the National Aeronautics and Space Administration NASA. Topic. Speaker of the House After Rayburn's death in November 1961, McCormick acted as Speaker until winning election to the post in early 1962. He served from January 1962 until retiring from the House in 1971. McCormick's nine years as Speaker were predominated by House passage of Great Society legislation during the administration of Lyndon B. Johnson, including laws to expand civil rights, access to public education, and health care for the elderly. McCormick was the first Catholic to be elected Speaker, and some critics complained that his religion sometimes showed in his leadership qualities. As an example, during the 1961 debate on federal aid to schools, McCormick insisted that church schools should be included, and the bill died because of disagreement over this issue. In 1963, McCormick changed his position, and oversaw passage of an aid bill devoted primarily to public schools. 
The latter part of McCormick's tenure increasingly focused on the debate over the Vietnam War, which he supported. McCormick's demeanor changed during these years and he reminded some observers of a kindly elder relative attempting to provide wisdom and guidance to unruly younger family members. According to Howe's members, McCormick's strength was his personal consideration of members, which inspired them to return his affection and sparked a desire to work with him. His weakness was that the seniority system created entrenched committee chairmen who wielded great power in the House, but could not be controlled by the Speaker. As Speaker, McCormick pursued a national agenda. He was proud of fighting for passage of farm bills, though he said he did not have more than five flower pots in my whole district. Between the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963 and the swearing-in of Hubert Humphrey as vice president on January 20, 1965, McCormick was first in the line of succession for the presidential powers and duties, thus he received Secret Service protection. In January 1969, Arizona Congressman Morris Udall attempted to unseat McCormick as speaker. In 1970, the political attacks increased and several congressmen urged McCormick to step down because of his his age. Jerome R. Waldy of California asked a party caucus to declare a lack of confidence in his leadership, which it refused to do. McCormick decided not to run for re-election to the House in 1970, but kept his decision secret until he announced it publicly in May 1970. McCormick was succeeded as representative in 1971 by Louise Day Hicks, and as speaker by Carl Albert. Retirement and death McCormick lived in retirement in Boston. He died of pneumonia in a Dedham nursing home on November 22, 1980. He was buried at St. Joseph Cemetery in West Roxbury, Massachusetts. Legacy In 1983, the University of Massachusetts Boston established the John W. McCormick Institute of Public Affairs. In 1985, the university dedicated John W. McCormick Hall, which was named in McCormick's honor. In 2003, the McCormick Institute was expanded into the John W. McCormick Graduate School of Policy Studies. In 2010, the school expanded its mission again, and it was renamed the McCormick Graduate School of Policy and Global Studies. The McCormick Graduate School's mission currently includes training in social justice, government accountability and transparency, and strengthening democratic institutions. The John W. McCormick Post Office and Courthouse in Boston was built in the early 1930s, and was renamed in McCormick's honor. It was designated a Boston landmark by the City Landmarks Commission in 1998, and in 2011 it was listed on the National Register of Historic Places. John W. McCormick Middle School in Dorchester was also named for him. A Massachusetts state government office building in Boston is also named for McCormick. Topic: <laughs> Family. In 1920, McCormick married Marguerite Harriet Joyce usually known as Harriet or M. Harriet. She was seven years older than McCormick and pursuing a career as an opera singer, an avocation she gave up after their wedding. The McCormicks had no children. While Congress was in session, they lived at the Washington Hotel. Stories about McCormick's devotion to his wife became legendary. His friends and colleagues claimed that they always had dinner together, no matter how late McCormick worked, and that they never spent a night apart. McCormick and his wife were devout Roman Catholics, and both were honored by the Vatican. Harriet McCormick died at age 87 in December 1971, following a long hospitalization. For more than a year, McCormick had spent every night in an adjoining hospital room. Edward J. McCormick, Jr., the son of McCormick's brother Edward Nako, served as Massachusetts Attorney General from 1958 to 1963. He was an unsuccessful candidate for the Democratic nomination for United States Senator in 1962, and the unsuccessful Democratic nominee for Governor of Massachusetts in the 1966 election. <laughs> 